Welcome back, guys, from more Santa Lucia. So last time, we got to continue Carlos's route a little bit. Uh, we become art buddies, or art rivals, sorry. Uh, <laughs> art rivals. And we actually get to uh, get a nice interview in with uh, Carmen. And uh, with more insight on Carlos's relationship with his brother, uh, especially now that he's in the hospital, with a very, honestly... You know, very honest, you know, moment, you know, uh, with, from Ben, you know, discussing that the importance of just kind of, you know, making, you know, trying to make peace as much as you can, because, you know, unfortunately, uh, okay, I won't get into it right now, but, uh, I think you know where I'm, where I'm gonna, you know, head towards. I just don't want to, you know, get all serious already, so let's just jump in. Oh my gosh. I, maybe I'll discuss it when, you know, there's more discussion on Carlos and his brother later on this route. But anyways, yeah, I think you know what I'm going to be talking about anyways, so let's uh, continue. How about you and Carlos? What? She comes out of the blue with a most unwelcome question. I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't get coy with me, bub. We already talked about how you have the hots for Carlos. Don't say it out loud. God. It's just... We're just friends, okay? Do I have to spell it out for you? She waves her hand in front of her. Okay, okay, sheesh so sensitive about your love life. It's kind of cute. Duh. She bursts into laughter at my expense. Let's move on, shall we? Whatever you say, dude. I step out of the drawing cl uh, drawing classroom, feeling pretty good about myself for once. <sighs> I can't believe I got ninety one percent on the assignment. This has to be a new record for me. <laughs> Carlos trails behind me with a self satisfied look, clearly plastered all over uh, over his face as well. You look happy. Hmm. Scored really well. <clears throat> oh. My smile turns into a smirk. What'd you get? Ugh, 68! She gave me a 73. She known as a viper, man. Two of our classmates storm out of the classroom, venting to each other, making a beeline for the exit. Maybe we should talk outside? Sure, okay. He's got the right idea. I'd rather not paint a target on our backs by talking openly about how well we're doing in the class. Carlos and I head out in the front, uh, help head out the front doors, and find a shady seat beneath the Saint Lucy statue. The smug grin returns to his face. So, I got a perfect score. Y you got a one hundred. He nods his head sheepish sheepishly. And you? I trust you did well. Not as good as you, clearly. I flip open my sketchbook and show him my page. I got a 91. Impressive. Thanks. I struggle to hold back a blush, so I look away in the hopes he doesn't notice. I didn't expect results so quickly. <laughs> It was your idea, Ben. We are art rivals now. Th that's true. I face him again and hold a fist up to my chest. You may have won this time, but don't underestimate me. When I put my mind to something, I tend to go all out. I look forward to it. God, why won't my stomach stop fluttering? Hmm. 
He's just so handsome when he smiles. Plus, he's actually enjoying hanging out with me now. I hope we can keep this up. <laughs> um, hey. I scratched the side of my face, preparing for what I'm about to ask. Yes? I was wondering if you'd like to go grab some dinner with me later? But we could start working on Thursday's assignment uh, together right after. Oh, I see. He looks away from me. Crap, did I say something wrong? Sorry, Ben, but I have something else I need to do today. Uh, I didn't know. Don't feel bad about it. Huh? I'm taking your advice. I blinked several times at him in confusion. Uh, about seeing my brother. You are? He nods his head. I need to be in Stockton as soon as possible today. My brother is able to see visitors now. Wow, I didn't expect you to listen to what I had to say. He goes quiet. I mean, you were pretty adamant about not seeing him when we, when we visited your aunt. Am I, not allowed, am I not allowed to change my mind? <sighs> I let out a long sigh. I wish he wouldn't take the least charitable interpretation of what I say all the time. It's not what I'm, it was getting at. Instead of getting frustrated, I smile at him. I know he has a hard time communicating what he really means with words. I can relate. <laughs> I'm happy you're going to do this. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's alright, dude. I rest a hand on his shoulder. Uh, but he immediately scoots away from me as a result. I was supposed to take a ride with my aunt and cousin, but... She had to cancel. Work? Carlos nods his head. Which means I have to drive down there by myself. My ears perk up. An idea suddenly springs to mind. Uh... <laughs> That's kind of awkward to bring it up. Hmm. It sounds like you'd rather have some company, huh? I suppose. Well, it's worth a shot, right? I don't exactly have anything I need to do tonight. Most of my homework is already finished. Would you like me to come with you? Uh tries to hide it, but his face flushes red before he's able to look away. That's fine. You don't have to do this. No, I want to. I stand up and walk in front of him. We're friends, right? He looks at, up at me with his mouth slightly agape. Hmm. Yes, uh, we are. I'll admit, I don't want to make the drive alone. And take me with you. If you insist. My heart skips a beat. I expected this to be more difficult. I wonder if we really are becoming friends. G great! <laughs> I'm sure I have a big dumb smile all over my face. Hey, wait! Where are you going? We have to leave right now. R right now? I grab my backpack and sling it over my shoulder. Man, you weren't kidding about as soon as possible, huh? We're heading to the parking lot. Are you gonna keep up? Yeah, yeah, give me a sec. Looks like he's not gonna give me time to, uh, to go back to my room. Pull out my phone quickly and scroll through my contacts. I need to tell, tell Zach and tell him I'm going to be gone for a while. 
You can do that as we walk. I do my best to multitask texting and walking. Definitely navigating around the oncoming crowd as my fingers dance across, uh, across my screen. There's this excitement running through my veins that I can't ignore. <laughs> I'm going on a road trip with Carlos. Sure, there's something important that needs to be done during it, but I'm actually going to see a bit more of California, and it'll be with Carlos. I can't believe he said yes. Make a beeline for the parking lot behind the dorm building. <sighs> it wasn't even that long ago when I was getting a ride from a certain lion here. Feels like a lifetime ago. I can hear Carlos's keys jingle as he pull, uh, pulls them out of. Oh, my bad. Pulls them out of his pocket. Hmm. Follow me. I'm parked over here, over there. My gaze goes towards where he gestured. You mean on the other side of the lot? I can see my car from my uh, room's window. He picks up his walking pace, so I do my best to match. Makes sense, yeah. Now I think about it, I don't think I've seen his room yet. What number did you say your room was? Hmm. 174. Why? Seeing as how the building is shaped like a square donut, that would, uh, that would mean his room would be... Is... That it right there? Huh? That that is correct. How would you figure that out? I shrug my shoulders. I don't know. Lucky guess. All right. Can you guess which car is mine then? He stops walking and folds his arms, grinning cheek to cheek. I didn't know he had such a playful side. Sure, let me look. I scan the nearby cars, looking for anything that screams Carlos to me. Hmm. I'm not much of a car person. I don't get the impression Carlos has either. So probably not that Prius over there. Or that Tesla here. Need some help? No, no, no. I, I got this. There's surprisingly more choices than, than I expected. I'm guessing you drive... Yeah, this one makes sense. I run over and lean against the hood of my selection. This red pickup truck. Carlos seems utility-minded. Plus, the red collar matches that one shirt he wears all the time. Nope, not quite. Huh? Tail droops in disappointment. I thought I had it for sure. Instead, he walks up to the side of an old Ford Focus and inserts his key into the lock. Th this was my next guess, I swear. Yeah, get inside. I unlock the door. I do as he says and swing around the to the other side, conscious that we're on a time limit. I quickly squeeze in and strap my uh, strap on my seatbelt. It's a lot older of a vehicle than I expected. The seat cushion is frayed and exposed. The rear, rear view mirror is uh, is missing, and there's this distinct old odor permeating everything, like a decade of accumulated dust. Are you ready? Y yeah, I think so. Let's go. Er his hand hesitates on the ignition. Thank you for doing this, Ben. It's no trouble at all. <laughs> I look over at him and smile. It's what friends do. And I can tell you need a friend right now. Hmm. Getting the reassurance he needed, Carlos turns the key. Within moments, we're pulling out onto uh, St. Street.
breathe, Ben. Just breathe. It's been about half uh, half an hour now, and we've crossed the mountains into the uh, metropolitan area. Traffic has gotten thicker now, now that we're in the in the big city. I'm leaning subtly inward towards the armrest since the passenger do uh, side door won't stop rattling. Yeesh, just how used is this vehicle? The low hum of static from the radio does its best to try and distract me from this issue. We haven't bothered trying to find a station since we left Santa, Ch Santa Lucia. What's the point? It's not like we'd get great reception in the, in the mountains anyway. I glance over at Carlos from the corner of my eye and see he's stone-faced, completely focused on the road. The rattling doesn't seem to bother him one bit. The car's a bit of a clunker, admittedly, but I guess if he's used to it. Still, it makes me wonder. Hey, Carlos? Hmm? Without moving his head, he lets out a grunt of acknowledgement. Where'd you get this car? I try to lead with an innocent enough question. A used car dealer in Santa Lucia. Why? He briefly looks over at me. Oh, no reason. Just curious. Have you taken a long drive with it like this before? It takes a moment to respond. No, I have not. Is there something wrong? No, no, it just... Seems a bit old, is all. <laughs> His finger taps against the steering wheel rhythmically. You're wondering why I'm driving a used car, aren't you? Uh, when he talks uh, quiet like that, it makes me nervous. I didn't mean to offend, I just... I suppose, yeah. <laughs> the pensive look washes over his face. Because it's cheap. I raise an eyebrow at, at that. Well, sure. But if this thing's just gonna break down all the time, are you really saving money? I went with what I could afford at the time. And it has done me well so well enough so far. Also relatable. I am I basically am driving a really old car myself. Fun fact about good old raccoon here. I'm about to speak up and ask why he didn't ask his aunt for help uh, buying a better car, but... I think I already know the answer. The tiger grows quiet as I let the tr uh, tr that topic drop. He's always been adamant about not taking charity or financial help if he can avoid it. Must be a pride thing or something. And I admit, I kind of admire his resolve. Further along the highway, we reach a high overpass that so gives me a stunning view of the city and how it empties out into the bay. Wow. When I look at Russell's limousine out to Santa Lucia, when I took Russell's limousine out to Santa Lucia, I fell asleep on the drive. I didn't get the opportunity to really see everything along the way. Looks like I missed a lot. This place is huge. The city stretches out around the bay for as far as the eye can see. There are two, possibly three bridges that span the width of the bay, uh, connecting east to west. Chicago was big, but I've never seen a city this big. It's big and dangerous. Huh? He shakes his head. I never liked it out here. There's too many people. Also relatable. Well, yeah, isn't that the point of a city? He lets out a long sigh. The more uh, people there are, the more likely you are, you are to run to bad people. It is dangerous out here. I shift my head to the side and look at him. He continues to stare straight ahead at the road. Can't you say the same thing about Stockton? He nods and frowns. And Santa Lucia, too. What do you think I never leave campus? 
He briefly faces me with a furrowed brow. Why do you think I work for, with public safety? I grew up in a dangerous city. I know what life is like in them. I see. His words make me think back to my time in Chicago. I'll admit, I hardly ever went off campus when I was at Bernard Academy. The teachers always warned us to stay ne uh, nearby and to be back before curfew. There were so many places I wanted to see while I was there, but I never got the opportunity. Ah! Carlos slams on the brake and swerves into the nearby lane to avoid colliding with someone who cut right in front of us. He holds the car uh, horn down long enough. The driver rolls down their window and gives us a rude gesture. Ugh. What an asshole. Ugh. The tiger lets out a Belabored, 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 belabored. I'm gonna say belabored. Sigh now that the threat is over. I'm sorry. I lost my temper. It's okay. I can't imagine how frustrating it is to drive here. I don't even know how to drive myself. <laughs> A faint grin appears on his face. That's another thing I don't like about the Bay Area. Huh? Drivers are rude maniacs. <laughs> I try to hold back, but the look on his face, coupled with his deadpan delivery, causes me to burst out laughing. What? What's so funny? <laughs> I laugh hard enough. I get slightly lightheaded. <laughs> <clears throat> made myself cough there. While he seemed offended momentarily, his grin has uh, grown into a full-blown smile. <laughs> we spend the next minute or so laughing together. When Carlos lightens up, he's super fun to be around. I'm vaguely aware that the car has stopped moving. Ben. Ben. I feel a large hand fall on my shoulder. Uh, I open my eyes and blink a few times. I'm awake, I swear. Looking over at Carlos, I see his face has returned to its stony form. You've been asleep since the Altamont Pass. I was just resting my eyes, man. He grunts under his breath as he undoes his seatbelt. You'd sway forward every time I had to break. Sure, but I readjusted myself too. Which means I was awake. Ah. The tiger lets out a long sigh. He doesn't seem to be into our banter right now. You alright? Without answering me, he steps out of the car and gently closes the door. The drive took longer than I, than I expected. I hope I'm not too late. I follow suit, taking my backpack with me. Yeah, I know what you mean. I haven't seen traffic that bad in years. You've slept through most of it. I wasn't asleep, God! He stares at the glass bridge connecting the garage to the hospital. It's uh, been a while since I was last here. Hmm? He goes quiet for a moment. My grandmother spent her last few weeks here. Never thought the next time I'd be here would be for Andres. We start walking together for the uh, for the bridge. I trail slightly behind the tiger, allowing him to take the lead. Uh, hey, there's no reason to go all glo oh, doom and gloom on me. He's feeling well enough to have visitors. That's a good sign, right? I suppose. We go the rest of the way without speaking. 
Carlos doesn't look back to make sure I'm behind him, though I make sure to stay as close as I can. Through two pairs of sliding doors, we finally arrive at the hospital lobby. There's a line of people leading to a table labeled registration on the wall above it. I guess guests have to check in before they go any further, huh? Before I have a chance to say anything, I notice Carlos has already found it himself at the back of the line. Off to the side, there's a separate form, separate room, sorry, with a ton of seats arranged facing a television screen hanging on the wall. Numerous fairly miserable looking people sit around, uh, sit, sit spread, spread out among the seats, either minding their own business or watching whatever's on screen. Hey, Carlos. Hmm. For the first time since we got here, Carlos looks at me. <clears throat> Poor guy. I can tell this is really stressing him out. Not only are his eyes uh, lightly bloodshot, but I can see the bags forming under his eyelids. Sad to think he was joking around in a good mood not even a few hours ago. I guess being in this place really brings home the reality of the situation. Would you like me to come with you? To my brother's room, you mean? I nod my head. Hmm. He stops to think for a moment. I don't think that's a good idea. That is a good idea. Sorry. Yeah, I get you. Shrugging his, uh, shrugging, shrugging my shoulders, I step away from the line. It'd be kind of weird for some random guy that he doesn't know to show up at his room. You are not some random guy, Ben. Not to you, maybe. I flash him a kind, a, a, as kind of a smile as I can muster. I'm sure you two have a lot to talk about, and I don't want to get in the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't be. I gesture towards the waiting room. You know where to find me if you need me. I think I'm gonna head. Uh, I'm gonna get a head start on some homework. Okay. Ben. Yeah. I stop in my tracks before getting too far. Thank you for being here. I smile back at him. You're welcome. If anything happens, text me. I'll be right down. I'm sure I'll be fine. Go do what you need to do. Alright. With that, I wave goodbye and enter the waiting room. Now, where where's a private corner where I can... Now, where's a private corner where I can read without little kids screaming in front of me? is pounding. Why? Oh my gosh, we're actually doing, uh, we're actually gonna be in Carlos's perspective. Kind of makes me wish that, like, maybe we could have had a Brian version of this at one point, but maybe we'll, we will in the future. I follow the nurse as she leads me deeper into the complex. Doctors, patients, everything's a blur. The only thing on my mind right now is my brother. Am I angry? Or am I worried? I haven't seen Andreas since I ran away from home. I hope it's just nerves. I steal myself and step inside. The blinds are mostly closed, leaving an eerie blue glow uh, throughout the room. A machine nearly uh, n nearby beeps rhythmically. I believe that is a heart rate monitor. It is hard to tell since the curtain has been pulled around the bed just enough to obscure its occupant. Does he even know I'm here yet? I 
I take a deep breath and step around the other side. Andres, it is a sight I was not prepared to see. My brother lays there staring at a television hanging on the wall behind me. He looks much skinnier compared to the last time I saw him. His gaze finally falls on me. Carlos! A faint smile forms on his lips. Right, Spanish. He always struggled with English. <clears throat> I sit down on the chair next to him and respond in the language he is comfortable with. I'm happy to see you too, brother. A smile on his face. Uh, 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 the smile on his face quickly fades. No, you are not. You may be frail right now, but his glare still cuts that right through me. I'm exactly where you always thought, but you know, I can see it in your eyes. I look away inst uh, instinctually. Fuck you. Andreas coughs uh, as he uh, sits up. I've been doing fine without you anyway. Well, besides being here and all. But I'll be out soon, no thanks to you. Andreas. I came here to see you. Do we have to fight? My heart can't stop, uh, stop racing. It has been a long time since, uh, since we saw, uh, saw each other. When was it? Oh, right. The day Mama kicked you out. She found those pictures you were looking at on the computer. I remember now. I stare at my brother. He is clearly trying to get a rise out of me. I have to stay calm. The nurses are listening. Mama didn't kick me out. I left because I wanted to. Because the scar left on your face? Another deep breath. <sighs> he reaches out and pokes my stomach. Damn, bro. You've been stuffing yourself, haven't you? You look, like, you look 100 pounds heavier now. Aunt Carmen's been feeding you well. Why'd you call me here if you're just gonna insult me? Finally goes quiet. Do you know why I'm here, Carlos? You overdosed. Ah, oh, wow. Nothing ever escapes you, brother. You're always the smart one. I narrow my eyes at him. What is your point? Do you want to know what I overdosed on? Doesn't matter what you took. My patience is running thin. I can't stop myself from standing up and looking down at him. I'm beyond disappointed with you, Andreas. Mama did her best to raise us, and she didn't, uh, didn't raise us to be like this. You know better than to take drugs. What the hell is wrong with you? You know all the things you're doing, uh, are doing are wrong, and yet you do them anyway. Use your damn brain. Fuck you, Carlos. Uh, who the hell are you to lecture me after all you've done? What I've done? That's right, Mr. Perfect. Or should I say, Mr. Faggot? My eyes widen with weight or age. <sighs> Take that back. Sue me then. Or are you a shitty law student too? I need to sit back down. It's only acting this way because I'm standing over him. Just calm down. I need to be the bigger man here. I wish Ben were here right now. He always knows what to say to defuse an argument. I can't put him th uh, through this, though. 
I need to take his advice. Andreas, we need to talk. Nothing left unsaid. <laughs> Folds his arms and faces away from me. As brothers. What is there to say? Just listen, okay? Continues to sit in the same position. <sighs> Take a moment to think it through everything. We used to be best friends, Andreas. What happened between us? As expected, silence. I wish I could have been there for you, but all you did was push me and everyone else away. Do you know how much shit I had to deal with because of you? While you're getting, uh, while you're off getting high with your friends, I had to take care of our sisters. I did the dishes, cook dinner, clean toilets, mow the lawns. And not once, not once, did you ever offer to help. I did everything I could to shield our sisters from your bad behavior. Do you have any idea what a bad influence you are to them? No, of course you don't. You never think about anyone other than you. You're selfish. And what does that make you exactly? Finally turns to face me. Perfect angel who sacrifices everything for his family? Is that why we haven't seen you in over a year? Give me a break. Mom always liked you more. Whatever you wanted, she gave it to you. You were the golden child. <laughs> you say I have no idea how I influence our sisters? You have uh, no idea how your in uh, behavior influenced me. I only ever set the best example for you and, and for our sisters. You have the nerve to call me selfish. You held us to such hot, to such extreme standards and never once offered to help us achieve them. Don't you remember? I... I still can't speak English well. No thanks to you. Every time I try to uh, come to you for help with anything at all, you always fold your arms and say, If I can do it, so can you. We're all, not all like you, you know. We used to play video games, skateboard, listen to music. Then somewhere along the line, you got in your head, you're so much better than everyone else. That's not true. Do you remember what you said, uh, what you said that day I came home with an F on my algebra test? I do, clear as day. I'm tired of you being a fuck-up. I close my eyes as the painful memory returns. You banned me, Carlos. I need a friend. A brother. And you abandoned me. I didn't realize any of this. Andreas. Don't bother apologizing. I know you'll never mean it. I look up at the television. An old telenovela we used to watch uh, together plays out on screen. All this time, I thought it was him who kept pushing me away. But was it me instead? Me pushing him, uh, pushing him away. Is that how I come across to people? Excuse me. The nurse from earlier steps into the room and addresses us in Spanish. The doctor will be in uh, soon to check in on Andres. I'm afraid he'll need some uh, rest beforehand. Alright. With slight hesitation, I stand up and start walking for the door. Goodbye, Andreas. He looks at, up at me with an almost remorseful gaze. Carlos. 
I'm the one who told Mama about your search history. I stop in my tracks. My mind goes blank. This way, please. I snap out of it when the nurse well waves for me to follow her. I don't even look back at my brother before stepping out into the hall. Let out a long yawn as I close the book I'm reading and lean back out against my seat. Phew. It sure is taking him a, a long time. I hope everything's alright. Somehow, despite my efforts, a pair of kids decide they're going to play loudly in the space in front of me. My mother's mother sits off to the side, sharing, uh, staring up at the television. Not knowing the slightest bit of shame and desire to uh, to to parent uh, to parent her kids. <sighs> oh well, it's not like I was able to focus much on what I was reading. Not with how much I'm worrying about Carlos. Hmm. I perk up in my seat when I see a familiar figure enter the waiting room. Carlos, over here. He doesn't seem to respond. I quickly pack up my things and sling my bag over my shoulder. Carlos! There you are. His gaze falls on me, but I don't feel like he's looking for uh, looking at me. It's a weird feeling. Everything go okay? We can talk about it in the car. Oof. That's the kind of answer you get when uh, something bad happened. Alright. Without another word, he starts uh, walking for the exit, and I follow suit. I walk back to the car in uh, terse silence. Maybe I should have went with him. Ugh. Being left in the air like this is killing me. What happened? Carlos inserts the keys into the passenger side and opens the door. Here you go. Thanks. With a nod, I slip inside as gently uh, as he gently closes it behind me. Moments later, he does the same on the other side. Instead of putting the keys in the ignition, he holds them in his lap for an uncomfortable amount of time. So, uh, I take it didn't go so well, huh? I'm tempted to put a hand on his shoulder, but I don't know how he'd react to that. No. Would you like to talk about it? closes his eyes and rubs his forehead. My brother is stubborn. He doesn't want to change. He'll continue to be the person he is no matter what I say. I'm sorry, Carlos. Did you two have a fight? He stops for a second before shaking his head. No. At least not as bad as we used to. He wouldn't stop insulting me, but I had to be the bigger man. I'm proud for, uh, of you for staying calm, Carlos. I look over at him with a smile. I understand this wasn't easy for you. Taking the high road is a very mature thing to do. He nods his head almost absent-mindedly. Clearly his mind is elsewhere. Still hasn't started the car. I sit with my hands in my lap. Ben? The long silence is eventually broken by the tiger. Y yeah? I took your advice. Nothing left unsaid between brothers. 
You did? I should feel a wave of relief at this, but seeing how Carlos is feeling right now, I I'm glad something I said made a difference. <laughs> He nods his head in affirmation. Something my brother said has left me thinking. Ben, I want you to be honest with me. Sure. I feel a uh, familiar nervous twist in my stomach. Do I... Um... He seems to struggle putting his uh, question to words. Do you think I push people away? Do I come across cold and uncaring? I'm almost floored by what he asks. I... I see. I take a moment to formulate a response. Do you want to know what I really think? He stares, uh, he stares straight ahead at the concrete wall in front of the windshield. I don't think you're cold and uncaring, Carlos. Rather, I think it's the opposite. Hmm? I've spent a lot of time trying to get to know you. And I think I've been able to see the real you behind this mask you wear. The reality is, I think you care so much about others, you can't stand to see them make choices you think will hurt them. You hold people to the same high standards you hold yourself to because you care about them. And that's one of the things I really admire about you. He sits there in silence. I can't quite tell, but... I'm almost sure the corner of his eye is glistening. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, this is the moment. Carlos, as gently as I can, I put a hand on his shoulder. Hmm? I care about you, too. You don't have to wear that mask when you're around me. Just... Tell me how you really feel. I'll understand. Uh, Alright. I will. Good. Once again, silence falls between us. At least I have the, I have the knowledge that I managed to get through to him. Ben. Yeah? I... I want to tell you why I moved in with my aunt. He seems to be taking deep breaths. It's because you had a f bad fight with your brother, right? No. I could deal with my brother. He takes another deep breath. At this point, my heart is pounding. The truth is, I ran away from home. Huh? My mother discovered something about me that, out of respect for him, I avert my gaze towards the wall in front of us. I'm not proud of. I couldn't handle the shame, so I... I nodded my hand and understand, ahead in understanding. I'm here for you no matter what. I won't judge you for your actions then, because I know who you are now. And that's the Carlos I like. My heart keeps pounding now that I realize what he's doing. Don't say something like that. Why not? You're my close friend, right? Am I not allowed to care about you? I don't want to be this way. I don't want to feel this way about another man. It finally hits me. I 
confirmation I've been waiting for. Carlos, are you saying that you're gay? All sound in the world seems to disappear when he looks over at me. We stare into each other's eyes for what feels like an eternity. Yes. He buries his face in his hands. Ugh. I... I can't take this. I don't want people thinking I don't care about them. I don't want to push people away. But I... Carlos! Carlos! I make a bold move and decide to pull him into an embrace. It's okay. You don't have to be scared anymore. He finally lets his guard down. Watches his hand fall, uh, fall, uh, watch his hands fall gently into his lap. He takes a deep breath and lets himself go in my embrace. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with the way you feel. Please, don't try to hide it anymore. I'm aware that my heart rate is going through the roof by this point. But besides, you're in good company. Because... I'm gay too. Not a word escapes his lips, but his silence says everything that needs to be said. Please don't be so hard on yourself, Carlos. You're so full of love. I want you to feel comfortable enough to share it. My heart flutters when I feel him return my embrace. Thank you, Ben. You can always count on me, Carlos. My eyes widen when an unwelcome sound emanates from my stomach. Uh... Hmm. I'm disappointed when Carlos breaks off the hug and puts the keys in the ignition. Sounds like you're hungry. <laughs> My face flushes red. How embarrassing. I I could use something to eat, yeah. It's time for dinner. I know a nice place to get food around here. Really? My curiosity is piqued. What is it? There's a. Is that a Takeria? Takeria? Uh, Takeria? I don't know. I'm just gonna. I'm, I'm sorry. I used to go to all the time that serves the best tacos. <sighs> I've been meaning to try authentic Mexican food. I'm down for it. <laughs> I smile when I see a faint red hue appear on Carlos's cheeks. Then that's where we'll go. Carlos backs, uh, backs us out of the uh, parking slot, and soon we're ma uh, making our way out of the garage. He may have not had, had the reconciliation with his brother he was hoping for, but I think Carlos managed to find something else he needed, uh, he needed today. And so did I. All right, I think this is a good place to uh, to end uh, for today. Oh my lord! I swear, Carlos's route so far has just either been relatable or like just emotionally taxing for me. I don't know. It's like. You know, you, you kind of learn, and, and sometimes you learn in life that no matter how hard you try, 
and no matter how much you want to take the you know high road you know and hope that everything will be okay sometimes things just are the way they are sometimes things are irreparable but I think what's important here is sometimes what needs to be said needs to be said and you know even though unfortunately for Carlos and Andreas they clearly you know they they clearly can't go back to the way that things used to be they're they clearly are different people now and part of it the part of their change was you know their bad influences with each other you know but at the same time you know we understand but uh, how they both feel and I think sometimes and I guess what I really am reflecting on right now is how much I relate to Carlos's you know struggle with feeling like he pushes every, everything away pushes everyone away and he comes off as cold and you know uncaring and I feel that sometimes you know I reflect on that with all my bad relationships and all my bad friendships and all my bad familial relationships and I uh, that part really hit a chord with me that I didn't think was gonna be possible for a fucking furry visual novel you know <laughs> like don't get me wrong I mean furry visual novels can be relatable but I just didn't really expect something like this I knew it wasn't gonna go down well but I, I guess going into Carlos's perspective really adds a lot and I really do hope we get like other characters perspectives more often maybe not all the time because at the end of the day I mean it is Ben's story but you know and I think that's probably something that was highly missing from Brian's route was that we didn't really get a lot from Brian's perspective we basically looked at everything through just Ben's outlook and I low key was kind of hoping at least, I mean I'm sure Brian's going to have his moment I'm sure Nate will have his moment too but yeah I god that oh my gosh I'm sorry I'm just that that hit me like a truck. <laughs> that really hit me like a truck, everyone. <laughs> well, uh, next time we'll be continuing his route. Uh, we're getting, we're kind of close to finishing his side of the route. We got about what like four days in game left, so it'll be a bit of a trip, but we're almost there. And oh my gosh, I <sighs> that really hit me. I'm sorry. Um. Anyways, next time we'll hopefully look into, we'll probably be continuing something a bit more lighthearted, it seems like. We're back at the art class, so, the drawing class, so. Until then, everyone, see you guys next time. Bye.